PC question. Yes. I literally stand naked in my mirror. Vet your partners. I lost everything. I am going to add value in this room. The right answer is always to over deliver and over serve, fighting to see who's better than who. Audit the people who you keep closely connected to you on a regular basis. We highlight each other and elevate each other. Why don't I ever have any money? The extra money mindset will drive you in debt. There have been so many breakthroughs. Welcome to another episode of Full Transparency with Donnie Wiggins, where we have fully transparent conversations about entrepreneurship, life, relationships, all the things, you guys. Full Transparency is designed to give you a fly-on-the-wall perspective about entrepreneurship from entrepreneurs who are doing the entrepreneuring. Anyway, today we are doing a Q&A from our audience from our community, I allow you guys to submit questions that you want to answer. And we're about to go ahead and get into it. I've got the help of Zell, uh, our full transparency engineer right here, who's going to be reading some questions coming from one source. And then I will be reading some questions coming from another. So you want to get started? Yeah. My <laughs> first question is going to be, uh, what do you do to make your community so successful? What do I do that makes my community so successful? Uh, number one, first and foremost, I believe that one of my major success hacks is my transparency. Uh, since the beginning, since the start of me building business on social media, I've always been really transparent with my audience as to what's going on in my business, what's going on in my life, what's going on, you know, with just things, right? And taking my community through the journey has been what, allows people to have this almost magnetic appeal to me. Uh, when you are raw, when you're real, when you're relatable, when you're not trying to be something that you're not, people are going to gravitate towards you because there's something relatable about you uh, that they can see that they admire or they desire to become or they are or have been at some point in their journey. Uh, so that's one thing from a character standpoint. But then also from a business standpoint, uh, building your building your community, uh, something that I like to do, uh, your value, the value that you add to your community is going to set the tone for people wanting to join your community, people wanting to stay in your community. Uh, I believe when it comes to value in the community, the right answer is always to over deliver and over serve. Um, I see a lot of people go wrong, um, do a wrong thing by saying, oh, that's enough. I don't have to do anything else there. And my philosophy is to over deliver and over serve like you want to make your community a no brainer to be a part of. So that's what I believe are my cheat codes to building a community. Can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. That All was right. good. Good answer. <laughs> Let me see what's the question that I have. Um, how do you start conversations at networking events? I did my first one and I just wanted to hide against a wall. Okay, so y'all, I am like an introverted extrovert. And actually, I believe I heard CJ say something at the podcast summit that uh, motivated me to stop saying that I am an introvert. He said something like, you're not an introvert. You're just uncomfortable in the rooms that you're in, which causes you to not be able to be yourself in those environments. So uh, I am very outgoing. That's what we'll say. I am very outgoing. But when it comes to like networking with people and doing things like that, I can be just a little shy. And it's true. It's because uh, maybe I'm in uncomfortable in those spaces. Uh, for me, when it comes to starting conversations at networking events, I tend to start conversations with people close to me. So if we're seated um, at a networking event, I'll interact with people while someone else is speaking. Um, I'll ask someone, you know, what they're drinking, where the bar is, where the restroom is. Um, I'll compliment someone. Those are some of my favorite ways to get started. Like, oh, wow, your blazer looks really, really nice. May I ask where you got that? Um, excuse me, can you tell me where the bathroom is? Or if it's like an event where people are speaking, I'll say something like, hey, Donnie Wiggins is on the flyer. Did she already speak? Things like that uh, will help to start a conversation. Otherwise, you will go into these rooms and you will shrink and it will be uh, a, a waste of your time. And people deserve, when you walk into these rooms, you have to also bring value 
And when you identify the value that you can bring for other people, then you'll walk in with a posture of not being afraid, but feeling like they deserve to meet me because I have something that I can offer these people who I'm having conversations with. So maybe shift your mindset, trick your mindset into saying things like they deserve to meet me. I am going to add value in this room. Like the people that I'm meeting today, I will impact them in a long lasting way. Try that and see if you walk into the room um, differently. If those things don't work for you and you're super, super timid, super, super shy, try, try doing things um, instead like uh, breathing exercises, taking deep breaths to really, really get comfortable. Uh, that will help to calm your nervous system down just a little bit so that you can have a conversation. And if you struggle to start, make yourself approachable. I'm really really good at making myself approachable. Like yeah. I sit somewhere, I am smiling. I always look good. I smell really good. Like you're going to say something to me. And then the conversation starts from there. So there's something. What you got, Zell? I like that. All right. This is a spicy question. You ready? A spicy question. Yes. <laughs> All right. So they said, would you date a felon that turned his or her life around? Would I date a felon that turned his or her life around? Um, I believe, obviously, it's situational. It's definitely situational. Um, n not all felonies are created equally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I believe it depends on... The answer is yes, but it definitely depends on what the felony was um, and if they've definitely turned their lives around and what that means, because turning your life around to one person isn't the same thing as turning your life around to another person. Um, coming out and saying, hey, I'll just never commit that felony again isn't necessarily indicative of turning your life around. It just means that you won't do that again. Right. So, it, yes, the answer is yes. I have outstanding friends uh, that some have some felonious background and they are some of the most profound thought leaders today. They are impacting and inspiring entrepreneurs. They are changing the lives of people who um, didn't believe in themselves to aspire to be something uh, more than what they were just given, the cards that they were dealt. And some of the people that have given me some of the best advice uh, have some type of background. I believe that people deserve to be forgiven. And I believe that people can reimagine themselves, rebrand, rebuild. And yes, but there are just for clarity, there are some deal breaker felonies that I won't touch. I don't care how close to God you are today. Right. <laughs> just some of them. I'm, I, I wouldn't uh, touch with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My turn. Yep. Let me see. Um, what are the bad ha what are bad habits that you're working on in real time and how are you working on them to get better? Listen, one of my bad habits. So I work out consistently. Well, kind of, cause this is my bad habit. Um, typically I work out with a partner and we work out maybe four to five days a week. But if my partner is unavailable to work out, I will not make it to the gym. Like, I just can't bring myself to make it to the gym. I am only motivated to work out in the company of someone else. So that means a trainer or um, an accountability partner, or somebody in my friend circle, things like that. Mm -hmm. I'm only motivated to work out in those spaces. And I think it's such a terrible habit because the health and fitness that I'm going for has nothing to do with anybody else. It's all me, right? Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I am doing to, and I just started this, uh, something that I'm doing that I found that will get me to the gym, whether somebody joins me or not, every single morning, I literally stand naked in my mirror every single morning. I stand naked in my mirror and I do like a whole visual body scan of myself and I start poking at the things that I don't like. Like right now, y'all, I'm struggling with a little bra strap fat and I don't like it. I don't like it at all. In fact, it's driving me nuts. And so I look at myself, I look at that bra strap fat and I will at least work out at home. I will at least pick up my weights 
and my kettlebells and do a workout at home. And this is this is the slow but steady process that I'm using to make sure that I at least get some physical fitness activity in and not just be like, oh, they couldn't make it today. <laughs> well, then we're not working out. <laughs> OK, is it my turn? Uh, yes. OK, let's see um, how to start and how to start an entrepreneurial culture in your own city like Atlanta has. Y'all, so I get this question so much. How do I build something like that in my city? And I'm going to be honest with you. Atlanta has been the breeding ground for entrepreneurs since before I was a little girl. Okay. In fact, the reason that my mom moved from New Orleans to Atlanta was because she aspired to be an entrepreneur and she wanted the higher paying jobs and, you know, things like that. And so Atlanta has been just one of those hubs for entrepreneurship and black people uh, especially can come to Atlanta and do extremely well in this environment, whereas it could be a bit more challenging in other environments. If you want to duplicate, I know that Dallas and Houston, they're doing a really good job out there at building their own culture of entrepreneurship. But if I can think about what was done here and thinking about the circle of influence that I am a part of and maybe what we did specifically, um, we host our own events. That's number one. Lots of networking events, lots of business events, lots of events where people can actually gather and meet each other. Right. Um, that's number one. But what I have seen many of these guys do, um, like David Shans, like Nehemiah Davis, um, like him 500. And there are so many is not just host events, only highlighting themselves, but also hosting events, putting other leaders in the room, honoring and highlighting other uh, experts and other people who can move a room and impact and influence. And what that does is it makes everybody feel like we're playing on the same team. So now anytime we're doing an event, anytime there's a conversation, anytime there's a trip, whatever it is, we want you to come. So now we feel really, really good in this environment because it's an environment that was built by celebrating other people who are as successful as knowledgeable, as impactful, as powerful. We don't get into, or at least in my circle, we don't really get into fighting to see who's better than who. Okay, so sometimes there's like a little friendly competition, you know, where, where we get into it, but it's friendly and it's healthy. Mm -hmm. But from a high level perspective, we don't get into like really competing with each other and shutting each other down. We highlight each other and elevate each other. And that makes us want to be connected and around each other all the time. And then that draws other people to wanting to be in that same energy. And the circle just grows and grows and grows. So you do that. You do that in your city. Think about how you can bring some of your leaders, some of your, your uh, most impactful entrepreneurs together. Invite them out, but invite them out in a way that highlights them. Invite them to invite their community community out, invite them into spaces that feel good, but make it valuable, make it valuable. Because if they're in an environment where you brought value, they're going to show up for everything that you do and vice versa. And over time, over a period of time, you'll see that the community is growing. Your circle is growing. And then you guys start doing things together, hosting things together, go out and serve the community together, go out and speak at schools together, go out and feed the homeless together, like do things that actually matter and the culture will absolutely grow. That's good answer. You got one? Yeah, I got one for you. Okay. So somebody said, can you tell us a story when you realize you got your breakthrough with your business? Can I tell a story when I realized I got my breakthrough? Man, Zell, there have been so many breakthroughs. Okay. I think the very first breakthrough that I can think about um, is when I was invited, like in 2017, I was invited to speak at TD Jake's mega fest event okay. and, um, I'm there. Right. So I've told the story so many times, but there may be some new people who aren't familiar prior to this experience. My mom, even though I was making like high level six figures was still like pressing me. You got to go back to college. You got to do I'm like, mom, 30 something years old. It, hang it up, babe. <laughs> hang it up. All right. Mm -hmm. And so then I get this random 
invitation. It was random to me because someone found me on Facebook, DM'd me or inboxed me, they call it on Facebook, inboxed me and asked me if I was open to speaking. And that event, that opportunity just evolved. But what what the breakthrough was for me, I was speaking on their main stage and I was the only non-millionaire in that room. Like there were inventors and there were eight and nine figure business people who were speaking and teaching a group of a group of um, entrepreneurs and people, faith based leaders, faith based uh, people about entrepreneurship, about life principles, about dreaming big, about doing more. And as I was watching from backstage, everybody else speaking for a moment, I'm like, I don't know if I deserve to be here. Like my story isn't their story. I didn't invent the water gun. I didn't make billions of dollars. I didn't do any of these things. I'm just Donnie, right? I'm just Mm -hmm. Donnie who uses her gift of gab to inspire and influence people. So it's my turn to go on stage and I'm nervous. My mom is there with me. Um, I invited her because she's a huge fan of Bishop T.D. Jakes. And I go on stage And I have this audience of people screaming, shouting affirmations. I am the shift. I believe I can. I can do it. Like all these things that I was, I I believe in my ability to figure it out. And they are chanting back with me. And I looked to the side stage and I saw my mom standing there in tears, like, The woman who believed in me as her daughter, but didn't know where this entrepreneurial journey was going for me. My mom is standing in tears. And that's when I knew, okay, I've done a good thing. However, when I got off stage, there were like five more people scheduled to speak behind me. And one of them said to me, someone who I'm super cool with today, he said, I don't want to go after you. I, I, I don't want to go after you. That was a breakthrough moment for me. That was a moment that helped justify everything that I had worked so hard for. At the time, I really wanted to be known as a thought leader. I really wanted to be a speaker. I had been put in a box of only being able to serve women. Um, Everything that I was getting booked for up until that time was like a women's empowerment brunch or uh, mommy's event. And, And those things are great. I'll still do them today. But I was in that box, meaning only getting booked for that. And when Bishop Jakes and his production team picked me to speak and I saw all the men that were being impacted by my voice and all of the fathers and people who just wanted to work with me at that time, that for me was evidence that everything that I had done up to that point was being recognized on a global level. That was one of my breakthroughs. Ooh, (laughs) That just brought back so many good memories. Hey, hey, entrepreneur, are you looking for mentorship? Do you ever watch me here on the Social Proof Podcast or on Full Transparency and say, you know what? One day I want to work with Donnie. Great news. You absolutely can. Join me inside my community, Actionable CEO, where we help to develop new habits, grow you personally, professionally, and financially, help you take massive action in your business, ultimately helping you make more money. It's just $97 a month. We meet every single week. We have a book club. We do live co-working sessions. When I'm in your city, you guys get to connect with me in person and so much more. Don't take my word for it. Go over to actionableceo.com. Check out the page and see if it's a good fit for you. If so, I'll see you on the inside. Let me see. I have more. Um, uh, Everybody's asking about this entrepreneurial culture. Okay, what's the best way to rebuild? Shout out to King Ashley Ann. I just love her so much. Um, She's asking, what's the best way to rebuild? I don't think a lot of people know your backstory and how diligently you've worked to create an outcome of success for yourself. Listen, I used to call myself the queen of rebuilding, and then I stopped calling myself the queen of rebuilding because I'm like, maybe I am speaking the need to rebuild into my life over and over and over again, but I know how to rebuild a thing. Um, The best way to rebuild first is... Um, I believe studying what went wrong in the last thing. 
So if you are currently in a business and it's not working, you need to rebrand it. Maybe you need to reimagine the idea. Maybe, you know, like she asked, you need to rebuild it. The very first thing that you want to get clear on is what went wrong in the first place. What what happened? So Ashley and I were able to have a really good conversation um, one day when she was here in Atlanta and I was sharing my story with her of having experienced like the very first recession as an adult in my lifetime, that 2008 to 2010 time period where I was a really savvy um, real estate agent here. And I sold the most luxurious condos in the city was my focus. And I was making all the money Zell. <laughs> well, that recession happened and I was not able to financially survive more than six months. I lost everything, repossessions, foreclosures, you name it. I lost it, lost my job, everything. And originally when I started to rebuild, so to speak, um, as soon as I would get money, I was going back into the same habits that I had, taking my money and considering money, extra money. You never have extra money. The extra money mindset will drive you in debt, all right? Mm -hmm. Because if you have any abundance of money, there is something that you have to do. You have to give your money instructions. And so now I'm coming from a very negative net worth, just trying to rebuild to have money, like cash on hand to pay active bills. And I realized after I started working again and I'm going back and forth and I just can't seem to get off my feet. I can't seem to get past this struggle. I can't seem to get things right. Like I'm paying bills and more bills are piling up. I'm not uh, prepared for unexpected expenses. I remember getting a flat tire one day and I'm like, God, if it's not one thing, it's another. Mm -hmm. Like, when will I ever have a breakthrough? Why don't I ever have any money to, you know, when will I ever have the money to do these things? And so I was looking through my bank statements you know, they used to be in paper still at this time. And this was the first time I had done an audit of my bank statement. And I was trying to figure out just where I could cut expenses so I could have money to change a $200 tire or whatever. And I started to notice that when I was making multiple six figures, my habits were like high end shopping. When I wasn't making high end spend uh, high end money, I thought that because I wasn't in Gucci and Chanel that I was doing better. I thought that I had better spending habits, but it just transitioned from a bunch of high end spending to a bunch of fast food, eating out, stopping at Starbucks, doing all these little things, stopping at the gas station to pick up snacks when I don't need them, doing all these little things that it was just a swap. And so it was a money mindset. I had a very, very terrible relationship with money. I would get money. I would spend money. I would get money. I didn't invest anything. I was hardly saving. I had it. I had extra money and I would get paid something and be like, OK, here are my bills. They got paid. I got two hundred dollars left. I can do this. What can I do with this money? And that was me. Oh, I deserve to go out to eat. I deserve a new shirt. I deserve a new pair of shoes. I deserve all these things. When it wasn't until I realized that with this extra money, that's not so extra, I needed to invest it into myself, invest it into learning a high income skill set that I have now, mm -hmm. um, invested into mentorship and coaching, invested into things that can pay me back over and over and over again. It wasn't until I had that mindset that I began to rebuild. The first step to rebuilding is to repair the damage that was done mm -hmm. from the thing that failed. Yes. Identify what that damage is and repair it. Usually it's attached to some type of bad habit, um, you could be a large corporation and have bad habits attached to how you manage your employees, how you facilitate practices and policies. And that habit can lead you to be in a position where your business is failing. You have to fix that habit. You can be an individual that has bad mindset practices, um, bad beliefs, also bad habits, lack of discipline. There's something that is the root cause. It wasn't just that you're not making money. It wasn't just that you can't close a sale. It wasn't just that you're not getting enough leads. There is something that you can fix, usually internal, usually related to a discipline, a habit, a mindset shift, a belief. 
that you can fix first before you get on that journey to actually rebuilding in a sustainable way. So do a, do a heavy, deep audit on what went wrong and then what you need to do. We can't just sweep it under the rug. What you need to actually do to fix it. Good answer. Good answer. Thank you. all <laughs> You got one? Yeah, I got a question for you. So somebody asked, do you have any advice on on a foundation for a successful partnership? Do I have any advice on a found for a foundation? What? Yeah. It says, do you have any advice on foundation for a successful partnership? Do I have any advice on foundation for a successful partnership? Yes. Um, vet your partners. And I, I believe we're talking about business partners um, with that question. But even even in a relationship, vet your partners. Vet, it, vet your partners, okay? Um, you have to, like, we get really excited. Um, you'll go into a room, you'll meet somebody, you guys have stuff, some things in common and you're having a conversation and it was like, oh, her energy was great. His energy was great. Let's start a business. Mm -mm, mm -mm, no, um, I believe that prior to going into business partnership with someone, you should observe them in many different environments. You should observe um, how they are with money. Um, do they pay their bills on time? Uh, are they just haphazardly spending a ridiculous amount of money, you should observe if they're already in business, how they are with their team. How do, how well do they treat their team? And is it in alignment with how you would want to run and govern your staff at your, at your business? If they don't have a team, how well do they treat people around them? Listen, the way that people treat waiters and janitors, flight attendants, service professionals, the way that they treat them is very, very, very telling as to what their core values are. So pay attention to things like that. Um, have you had an ability to have a deep conversation with them? You should have a deep conversation with them and see how the both of you process the result of that conversation. Because in business partnership, you're going to have a bunch of deep conversations. Mm -hmm. Maybe the vision is out of alignment at some point. Maybe you guys have a difference of opinion in how you're spending money at some point. Maybe the service offers you, you're, you're differing on. And there will be several deep conversations. So I recommend that you have some deep conversations. Um, my personal belief is um, to do business with people who do well by their families. So, for example, one of my business partners is David Shands. You guys know him. And we were actually partnering in aspects of business prior to him being a married man. But I observed how he managed just his life and what his values were. And then when he became married, um, I have the ability now to have a front seat and observe how he operates as a married man. He is committed. He is disciplined. He demonstrates discipline. He demonstrates commitment. He demonstrates such a high level of respect like David isn't even going to hug you inappropriately because of the respect that he has for his wife and those things matter because if you don't respect your home front you won't respect me as a business partner the moment uh, the money is in jeopardy or something happens in business you'll treat me worse than you're treating your spouse so I won't do I won't actively and knowingly go into business um, with someone who doesn't do well um, by their family. Um, I personally, you know, core values, I think is what I'm trying to say, just to kind of sum it up. Um, core values are really important to me. I couldn't do business with someone um, who was a bad parent, meaning like you're not there for your children. You don't, you don't take care of your kids. You're a deadbeat mom, deadbeat dad. I'm good. There are a certain set of core values that are really important to me. And I believe that before you go into a business partnership, maybe you write down your list of core values that are really important to you. Things like integrity, honesty, um, great with money, financially, uh, financially astute. What are those things that are important to you? Also, write down a list of your weaknesses. Maybe you're the person who's not financially astute. Maybe you don't know how to generate uh, revenue. Maybe you don't know how to generate the, uh, the attention or the appeal required to build a business. Whatever those things are, get clear. Write those things down and then make sure anyone you're vetting for a business partner can 
honor those core values, like you have those core values in line, and then they complement your weaknesses uh, by way of it being their strength. Did I answer that? You did. I did. You okay. Did. You was nailed that, it. I yeah. did? You nailed it. Okay, I nailed it. All right. As long as I nailed it. Was that your question or mine? Um, your question. I got a question. Oh, that was my question. That was your yeah, question. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Um, who? this is a long one. I don't know about that one. Let me look. Scroll down. Okay. Outside of your personal development, what were some other programs or education you used to help develop you into a business coach, mentor? And what do you know? And what and what you do know? Oh, what you do now is what they meant. Okay. And what do you do now that helps you grow continuously in the space? Outside of your personal development, what were some other programs or education you used to develop you into a business coach and mentor? And what do you do now that helps you grow continuously in the space? Okay, so personal development, outside of personal development, professional development is what helped me to de uh, develop into a business coach. I actually got out there and just did the work. So it started for me with personal development, with, you know, the books and the journaling and um, the meditation and the prayer and all those things that had to keep me personally intact, right? Keep my mindset uh, at a level where I was believing for the positive outcomes, the best possible outcomes, that personal development brought me uh, to into a space where I yearned for information now to use this new energy, this new person that I was becoming to make money. Now I need to be someone who goes out there and seeks opportunities and has different conversations. And so it brought me to a place where now um, I'm consistently doing personal development, but now how can I leverage these new habits, these new disciplines, these new interests and transition it into a financial benefit? And so then I started to seek finan financial information and education, um, professional development. And the best professional development that I came, that I received, came as a result of mentorship, being able to submit to someone else's leadership and on the job training and experience, so to speak, like actually trying things, doing the work, finding what I like, finding what I don't like and going hard into the things that I did like quickly and relieving myself, removing myself from the things that I didn't like just as quickly. Right. Um, and those things over time, that experience will build up and compound over time and make me an outstanding uh, business coach. And then the second part was, um, what am I doing now that helps me continuously grow in this space? Y'all, I study, 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 study. I am always reading something. I am always reading something. I read all the books inside of my community, Actionable CEO. We actually read a book together every single month and we discuss it. We talk about how to take those words off of the pages and apply it to our businesses and our lives. So I am always reading. Um, I am always masterminding. So I have coaches that coach me. I am a part of coaching communities. Um, I am a part of coaching communities. I also uh, mastermind with my friends like we will travel together just to um, I have I have a set group of friends that are always going. It's myself and it's David Shans and it's Marcus Y. Rozier and it's Maya Elias. Like we are always going to be kind of that core group that will travel together uh, to mastermind. Like we'll go somewhere like, hey, we need a break. It's not cutting it in Atlanta right now. Uh, we need to move outside of our normal environment, go somewhere where we can sit in front of a beach have great food and talk about what's working in our business, sharing ideas. I have a really great group of friends around me that I can go to and like phone a friend and say, hey, look, what's working for you right now? What are you doing right now in your business that's working for you? What's not working for you? What's working with your clients? And we exchange information in that way. And that continues to develop me over time into being um, the business coach, the business consultant and the thought leader that I am, what I can guarantee you is the moment that you think, you know, it all, the moment that you can't be taught, the moment that you can't be led, you might as well hang it up and whatever level of success you've reached at that point, it will be the highest level of success that you reach. You have to be coachable and teachable. And I am extremely coachable and teachable, but you also have to seek out the right people to coach and teach. You can't be listening to a bunch of different information from different sources when the information may conflict. Um, you don't want to work with too many coaches on the same thing at one time uh, because their their methods, their strategies, their framework might be a little different and then you end up confused. 
So getting really, really focused and really, really disciplined, um, carefully picking the people that you're going to be learning from in that season and being committed to never stop learning. That is my, I am a sponge. I love learning. And things like this even is, it's therapeutic for me. Mm-hmm. I believe full transparency is therapeutic because I get to have these conversations that often sometimes serve as a reminder to me um, to go back to some basics or a reminder to me uh, to go back and revisit some thoughts and ideas that I've had before. And so having conversations with people will educate you more than you could more than more than you know possible. And that's also why it's so important to have people around you who add value that you can also add value to. But it's so important to audit the people who you keep closely connected to you on a regular basis. What 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 what's the value in those relationships? What are you talking about? What are the conversations like in those relationships? They're either adding to you or subtracting from you. Let's do one more. All right. One more. All right. So I got a question for you. Somebody said, uh, where can you get affirmation app by you? So where can I get an affirmation app by Donnie? By me? Oh, I think they're talking about my audio affirmations um, song. Mm -hmm. I posted it a couple of days ago. I'm pretty sure that's what they're talking about. Um, I have an audio affirmations. Um, It's in the form of a song. Many people don't know that I used to be like a singer and a rapper, songwriter. (laughs) Music was like my first love. You couldn't tell me that I wasn't going to be like the next Beyonce. Okay. You just Mm -hmm. look, you couldn't tell me. I don't sing like her. (laughs) I don't dance like her, (laughs) but you still couldn't tell me that I wasn't going to be the next Beyonce. Anyway, the music career did not pan out the way that I dreamed for it to pan out. Um, And so I decided one day that I would marry my love and passion for music with my gift of communication and um, apply it to where I was at that time. And, you know, affirmations is a really, really big part of my life. So I merged and married all those things together and I created this audio affirmations called I am the shift. I am the shift. And it's so powerful. It is so powerful. Um, You can get that on any platform where you listen to music. It's on um, Apple Music, Google Play, YouTube, uh, Spotify, wherever you listen to music, it's there. I Am The Shift by Donnie Wiggins. But when you get it, let me know that you got it and what you think about it. I know you're going to love it. I just know. You don't even have to tell me, but tell me. Tell me. (laughs) All right. That's going to be it for our Q&A today. Let me know how you guys enjoyed um, this Q&A and we'll invite the community to ask questions often because I want to make sure that we are answering the questions and having conversations that are serving you, not not just entertaining you. All right. I want to make sure that you are served and I will continue to do my best to bring the best guests, to have the, the deepest, most transparent conversations and to answer the questions that you guys send in to me. Drop it in the comments below. Which one of these questions, which one of these questions were your questions? Which one of these answers were speaking directly to you? I need to know about it. And I will see you next week on the next episode of Full Transparency.